Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? Manchester United lose their first match of game week one in the Europa League. That's some news. Bigger news is uh, the Queen of England has, has tragically passed. So that means football is off the menu, at least for the near term. This weekend's matches have been postponed. There's also a rumor of next weekend matches being potentially postponed because of a funeral. Um, so a lot to watch there. But either way, the problem is that the most recent game is the game you think about most. We're going to have the one nil against the saucy dads. Um, in our minds, sir. Scrappy game. Didn't really ever get going. Uh, B squad, but either either way, another bad VAR call goes your way against Arsenal. It goes against your way against Real Sociedad. Hey, that's the one I would have taken at the end of the day between the two. But we're going to be talking about this match for a while. Looking forward to, uh, you know, we were going to preview Palace because that's what we had. Now, who knows? If you have watched Manchester United. For a long time, you know, clubs from Spain got our number. I don't know why the shithousery it gets to the ref. Something there's bad juju ab- about Spanish clubs. We saw it against Atleti. We have seen it against Saucy Dad. Villarreal. Uh, we've seen it against Madrid with that famous Nani red card. I mean, what a what a piece of work this referee is. Honestly, uh, rough VAR call, but again, didn't do. Didn't do enough to win the game. Uh, ton of rotation from Ten Hag. I love it. You know, he's got to get, you know, Magoo minutes. Uh, Lindel Sloft. Lindel Soft got to get minutes. Uh, surprise, he started Erickson. I thought he needed a, a, a blow. But at the end of the day, you know, you're playing the GOAT, Cristiano Ronaldo. You should be winning this game. Casemiro needs to do better. So it's early. This is early. And a lot of players haven't featured a lot of rotation. It's going to take some time for Ten Hag to sort it out. But this is exactly what Europa League should be used for. Get these guys some minutes, figure out who you can rotate in the starting 11. Because, again, the fixture schedule is going to be even more crazy, given the fact they just postponed this weekend's fixtures, maybe even next weekend. That's nuts. We have a Winter World Cup. The players are already, like, guaranteed to play twice a week. I I just don't know how they're going to fit in all these games. You know, that was my reaction um, when the news broke yesterday, but the passing of the Queen was that, you know, I thought the one thing that would stop them from maybe doing a postponement, which probably was like kind of the default move, was that the fixture congestion is so nuts. Like you said, we're basically playing, depending on the cup competition that we're still involved with, two games a week for the rest of the season until the end of May. So I just didn't see how they squeeze in additional matches. Back to the Real Sociedad match, like you said, never got going. We did rotate the squad quite a bit. I actually would have liked to see more rotation. I didn't love that both of our starting fullbacks featured again. Um, wanted both of them to get a rest. Erickson, like you said, that was one where even if you had to bring in a, a Nick ball, I'd rather see that because he's been playing too many minutes. And now I guess it's less important because they're going to have an extended break given that we don't even know when the next Premier League game is going to be. It might actually be after international break in October, which sounds absolutely insane. Um, but... We never got going. That midfield, you could see. I mean, one of the biggest takeaways is that 11 that's been playing week in, week out during our four-week win streak in the Premier League, they've justified those starts. You know, everyone's calling out for Casemiro, myself included. He still looks scratchy. He's still giving the ball away a little bit. Still coming up to match fitness. Same with CR7. I think in form, CR7 would have scored a brace in this game against El Daddy. He had a couple really good chances in the air at the far post. Bottled a couple. Was offsides on one, which he actually did score, but... I don't think it's anything to get freaked out about. This is the best team in our group. You know, you obviously would have liked to win at home, but you got one bad call. Didn't really get up for the match. So the other two teams, they're uh, they're <laughs> we got to be taking away six points in each because they're I don't know. I still I still never heard of them, bro. As long as we finish third in the group, <laughs> we don't have to play on Thursday nights anymore, and we don't have to play conference league. So as far as I'm concerned, this isn't the worst result. But we gotta be finishing third. <laughs> no, third is conference league. I thought you said. <clears throat> oh, sorry. No, 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 no. I, that's, oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you want to not finish you're third, right? Oh no, yeah. You, okay. Which we're in right now, by the way. We're in third. Place. Yeah, yeah. So that's even worse. So yeah. <laughs> it's early. Look, it's, it's early. So, remind yeah, remind it's the early. fans. 
I'll tell you what, the American Red Devils Thursday nights, Europa League just doesn't work very well for us. So we're up early at like 6 a.m. on Friday. I'm still sick because my son went to preschool, like giving me every disease in the in the book right now. Uh, so we're doing our best. But yeah, you're right. We need to finish in fourth. <laughs> Maybe that's Ten Hag's master plan. I'm, I think we should have done a lot better here. Like to lose this game, I think is also like it shows signs. You know, we saw the Brentford, uh, we saw the Brighton, and then you bring in some players that are a part of that, and you see type, this type of match. Uh, it's not, this is not a, it's not a good look for Manchester United because with this many fixtures, we need to rotate and we need to figure out who are the players on the bench that we can really take advantage of. And right now, you saw it. Why isn't Luke Luke, Luke, Luke Shaw's injured? Juan Basaka should get a shout. Like Lindelof and Maguire looked horrid. Like. A midfield is, seems thin if he's playing Erickson. So there's a lot of questions around this team, and it's a long season. So the bench matters. We're, we're going to need Casemiro and Ronaldo firing at all cylinders. But, sir, let's get into a quick PSA for the podcast. If you like the American Red Devils, we are for fans, by fans. You know, we had an issue with Apple where they weren't posting our podcast for everyone who was out there. We emailed them. It is up on SoundCloud and a few other platforms. I think it was just an issue with our RSS feed. They claim to have fixed it so apologies for everyone who tried to download the pod we are on top of it thank you for everyone who messages to let us know you know this is why we're four fans by fans i'm like literally at work being like what the hell is going on here <laughs> trying to figure out the the pod feed uh but if you want to support this small time operation the best way to do so is patreon check out our patreon page patreon.com slash america red devils we post behind the scenes episode every single month Giveaway pin stickers, scarf shirts, you name it. We're trying to get to 100 Patreon subscribers. I think we're around the 70 mark. Everything you guys, uh, everything you sign up for matters a lot, uh, goes a long way for us. Big shout out to Travis Betts, our latest Patreon and Stratford End supporter. You are the real MVP. Thank you so much. Check out our website, americareddevils.com. We have great blog and merch. Uh, please check that out as well. Everything you buy does support us sir tell them about itunes reviews itunes reviews or a five-star review of the american red devils wherever you listen it goes a long way it helps support the pod helps us get found organically and even better uh we're still giving away free swag of the ard pod in perpetuity all you have to do write a five-star review wherever you listen and send a screenshot to american red devils at gmail.com with your mailing address and i will personally pick pack and ship some free ard gear send it straight to your door uh anywhere in the world absolutely great way to support the pod here's a great review coming from coit's fan uh my favorite pod is a diehard muppet in the midwest i don't find a lot of people to talk epl or united with staying up to date with you lads allows me to be informed and laugh along the way looking forward to more fun this season p.s anthony question mark question mark sir appreciate the review we appreciate all the miracle devils out there giving those reviews anthony that's one for another day today we're breaking down real sociedad sir sociedad yeah, you were uh, not pumped on the Anthony performance against Saucy Dad, sir. You know, I don't want to chuck up any performance because uh, you know I don't think anyone played well really except for Erickson uh, and probably Delo. You know, they were kind of the standouts. I think the whole front three or four didn't do much in this game to impress um, Anthony. You know, I'm a little skeptical. I'm a little worried about the price tag. <laughs> it, he had a hell of a goal against Arsenal, but. Um, that's a big, big dollar tag to fill. So we'll see, sir. But like, he still looks like he needs to get to match fitness. He's got a long way to go. I want to see kind of less, less of that leg shake and more just taking on players and beating it, beating his man and putting in a good ball. Cause that's honestly what I care about more than, uh, you know, than the frivolous you know, kind of like, um, you know, ballerina steps. You don't like the stanky leg. Yeah. I don't like that. I like it if you do it and they score a goal. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, like beat a man. Yeah, yeah. Great yeah. ball. No, I think it's just it, you, you get the flair, sir. You know, he's a flair player. Yoga, yoga Benita. Come on, it's go. like you got you got to know with Brazil. You get the flair. Let's go. Uh, let's get into the match. Manchester United zero, Real saucy dad one. Old Trafford group stage, baby. Hans and Franz is back. Do you have the Hans and Franz theme song? No, I do. Ready. Sir, I was 
gearing up the game and this came on, I was like, this is this, this ain't going nowhere, bro. As soon as this music hits, it's like you're back in the asylum. You're like, <laughs> you're all playing. <laughs> We're back. There's there's just something about like Thursdays that just it's just brutal. It's you know, brutal. it's just the like, you know, Wednesday just feels so much better than Thursdays. Uh all right, let's get into that lineup. Dave saves world number one in net. Malasia at left back. McGuire Lindelsoft center back pairing. Harry Magoo, he's back. Delo at right back. I don't know why you can't play well in the socket there. I give him a blow. Uh, Fred Casemiro, I actually like that we're going to see these two because this should be a midfield combination. Erickson at 10, Elanga on the left, Ronaldo up top, and Anthony on the right. Sir, how you feeling? You know, I, I have probably a lot of the same feelings that you had, sir. Um, obviously, like some of the rotation, you know, you got to give out the McGuire and Lindelof. Pour one out for the former uh, starting center back pairing for this side. They need some minutes just because you can't keep relying on Martinez and Veron. They need a blow. I want the fullbacks to get rotation. I wanted to, hey, I get to rotation. Dubrovka. Eventually, I got to figure out how to say the name. Apologies in advance to all the fans out there. But the fullbacks, I wanted them to get a blow. Like, I know Shaw injured himself, go into the canteen. But the low, you have Juan Masaka there. He's got to be able to start. Like, the low played well, to be fair. He's been playing really well recently. He needs a blow. And same with Erickson. The front three makes total sense. But those are my complaints. Fred Casemiro, that's a midfield that's eventually going to work out, especially when you're playing a team that's going to press you high um, and like to take, take you at it. Like a city, I feel like that would be the perfect midfield. Today, we were scrappy. How'd you think? Wait, hold on a second, sir. Tell you what, it's no angels, sir. And uh, every time I hear that, I just think back to doing every game in the in the road up to Gdansk, and just like <laughs> you, every time preview recap, you gotta hear that damn song. When we were playing in Gdansk, we were actually vibing to it before the final. <laughs> yeah, we thought we were gonna win, <laughs> and then it's the result of the final that ruined the song. Because obviously, if we won it, you know. Uh, yeah, we don't need to go down that road. Tough times, sir. Let's get into that first half. Sir, uh, like we said, United came out looking a bit scratchy with Sociedad snapping at United and looking to press high. But United had uh, an opportunity in the first 20, and it was Erickson who almost found Ronaldo with a perfect ball over the top f and far post. Just a little too much juice on it, but that was the move. Those balls in uh, to Ronaldo looking to put in a header. Those were our best chances of the day. Yeah, he did look dangerous when he got in behind, uh, but his finishing was lost today. It really was. We needed kind of primo CR7 because this game, we didn't play particularly well. We didn't create enough chances. So the chances that he did have, we could have made more of them. I think we would have gotten something out of this match. Speaking of which, on the other end of the pitch, 27th minute, good chance for Sociedad after Lindelof with a bad giveaway. I didn't think Magoo looked that bad, but Lindelof did not look good. He, he he played center back, looked bad, got called out a couple of times, and then he got moved, out, moved to right back when Delo got a blow, and he looked even worse out there. So, you know, I know he, AWB, he's a, he's a wanted man. Uh, clock is ticking, but you got to think that he's got to play, and even especially in a match like this, like, you got to rotate. Yeah, I thought he should have played. Uh, and then, you know, we got the mentality monsters, Lindelof and Maguire, you know, like how many years? How many years has Lindelof been in United? It's like, Jesus. Since uh, Jose Mourinho, sir, he's not going anywhere. Uh, to cap a not super eventful uh, first half of football. It wasn't the most exciting match by any means, especially after the Arsenal game. 36 minute, great ball from Delo. He's been looking very dangerous on that right side, putting in uh, some awesome crosses. But... Even better from a header from Ronaldo. Dinks off the top bar and into the net, but he was just offside. Called off. Unlucky, but you know what I've said, sir. CR7, he loves being off. He's always he's almost always off these days. Well, he's got to, you know, he's older. The legs are going. He's got to push the line as, as, as hard as he can. 
Uh, again, great service from DeLove. Ronaldo just not on the mark. We, we're going to see Ronaldo score a lot of goals. I, I do think by the end of the season, you know, he's going to be uh, a weapon that is on. This is Europa League. Let's not take it too serious. Let's get that second half. Second half, uh, Eric Ten Hag wasn't too happy, or maybe he was just thinking about rotation, but he made some subs, a double sub. He brought Bruno in for Erickson. He brought Martinez in for Delo. United, once again, coming out sloppy in possession, unable to pass through Sociedad. Erickson looked okay. Bruno looked okay. But really, it's those two in combination that look that have looked so good uh, so far this season. Speaking of which, Bruno had an impact pretty quickly, 46 minute. Uh, Bruno puts in a perfect ball and Ronaldo just has to score but he he just absolutely scuffed it it was another it was the same kind of play it was like far post curler had to do better and really just kind of missed it did the same thing in Arsenal had a really good chance from a corner and just miffed it so not the best there uh, another chance for Ronaldo in the 48th minute Ronaldo just smashes it over the bar from outside the box you know you love that hunger for goal you know he's going to score goals but um Ronaldo was definitely off today. He had a couple of really good chances. This was a decent one and just blast it over. Yeah, you know, he he hasn't played a lot, so I'm going to chalk it up to that. I'm not going to say the GOAT has lost the mojo just yet. Just, you know, it's good. Hey, get it out against Real Saucy Dad. And speaking of uh, getting it out, what a call here in the 57th minute. But it caught out by that corner. Here's Kubo once more. Full back for David Silva. Well, now the whistle's gone, and the yellow card is out. And the referee's given a penalty for hands, has he? It was Martinez, and it came off his leg, up onto his arm. This will be looked at. So, Brace Mendes has got responsibility now. He scores! He fires it into the corner. There's disbelief. Oh, sir, you know it's going to be one of these games, didn't you? Spanish opposition, make them bask. You know, that just steps it up a notch. It's like a even more accentuated level of being a Spaniard. <coughs> um, and you have to say, Martinez came in, looked really good. Like, the lead-up to this play, this chance in the first place, he put in an unbelievable block uh, when Real Sociedad were pushing I, I don't get it. You know, we the the fortunes of the VAR gods went our way against Arsenal, you have to be said, in terms of overturning that first goal of theirs. This one, dude, goes off his leg. He's turning his body. He's looking away. It's pretty, you know, pretty unlucky, I have to say, in this one. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm going to go back to the... I'm going to go back to the rules here from the... Uh, from FIFA, the IFAB... The real clause that we're getting at here, everyone is really mad about it online, but you have to understand the dynamics at play. If it touches, if a player touches the ball with their hand or arm when it has made their body unnaturally bigger, a player is considered to make if a, a player is considered to have made their body unnaturally bigger when the position of their hand and arm is not a consequence of or justifiable by the player's body movement for that specific situation by having their hand and arm in such a position, the player takes a risk of their hand and arm being hit by the ball and being penalized. Now the real issue is I think it is justifiable for his arm to be like that is close to the body. He's turning, he's trying to get out of, you know, he's trying to make a block. Uh, so I do think it is justifiable because I'm a biased Muppet, and therefore it's not a handball. But the real thing about it is, welcome to the video replay realm, you know, European football. They have yet to have this because the issue is the ref calls it a pen, and it's not clear and obvious to overturn, right? If he didn't call it a penalty on the field, VAR probably wouldn't have given it. But because he called it, they're not going to overturn it, right? Because you need clear and obvious evidence to overturn it. I think I think it's just yeah, you're right, sir. I mean, definitely, um, it's a bad call. Of course, it is. We know it is. Uh, the ref had a bunch of bad calls this game. He didn't seem to manage the game very well. He also has there's some marks around his his history. If you look back to him doing games in Italy, he's not a. Uh, a, a ref that has an uncheckered pass. So 
This one, unlucky. You like to have seen United create more chances, take better opportunity chances, play better football. But this is the problem with VAR. Uh, it's like sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't go your way. I think, you know, the call no, no, on Odegaard was just VAR. this one, not so much. But that's just like, it's so unequal. And so, are the, so is the no, officiating in England. VAR got just, it right. You think VAR, VAR got it right? Well, the ref got it wrong the, then. Because, yeah, because the ref called Penn, it's not so clear to t- overturn it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's so, like we just yeah, like the, the weekend, rules. like Very that was summer. overturned by VAR because that was a clear and obvious error. Exactly, and people are debating that that wasn't clear. You know, you know. So the whole idea is, I think the issue that people have are starting to understand it's when is the threshold for VAR to intervene, right? And this becomes like so abstract because it's is it clear and obvious? And here, it's not so not a handball that they're not going to intervene because the ref made the call because there is enough in there. And so that's why it's, it's, it would be hard for VAR to overturn when the ref calls it that because his hand is in making his body bigger. It does hit his arm in the box. And then therefore you're getting into minutia and that's where VAR shouldn't be. That's what people are arguing. Like, because the Erickson foul is like, I think it's a clear foul. To me, I think it should overturn, but people are arguing because it could be 50-50, VAR should not be involved. Right? VAR should just be for clear mistakes. Uh, and then the, the, then it's, it's a real slippery slope because this this whole video replay, as we've seen in, in the United States with NFL, uh, you know, it, it changes every year, and then things start becoming bigger issues, and then VAR overcorrects and undercorrects, so we're living through like the development of this technology and and uh, and how it changes games, and this is an example. Obviously, it's a good point because, like you said, we're like in the iteration as they figure out the technology in a practical sense. You know, on the pitch, they just implemented a new VAR, not VAR, offsides technology in the Champions League. You know super high tech with lots of sensors on the ball and sensors on the player and all these cameras that pick up their movement. Um, so that is still being flushed out as well. That's not going to be seen at, at the World Cup. Obviously, we're in Europa League, so they don't have the same level of sophistication as they do in the Champions League. But you're going to get these cases. They're going to continue. You know, that's not gonna, these bad call, calls, good in one game, bad in the other. It's just going to happen. Yeah, but 10 years on from replay in the NFL, like what happened is – it went from like these these numpties like on the side of the field or watching the game, like in in the truck out back. And obviously with VAR, it went to a central location, but they're still staffing like individual referees on it because like right now with like NFL, they went to the NHL model where it just goes to HQ and then HQ calls it the way they want because then you can have more consistency around like, hey, do you want the game more physical? Well, then that Erickson one isn't overturned and then you call it consistently right because they they figured out soon enough that consistency matters otherwise fans lose their minds and i still think there's a lot of inconsistency in var because what we're being told from the premier league is they want a lot more physicality VAR is going to intervene less and what we're seeing from the numpty refs is it's the same inconsistent var as last season so it's going to take time it's going to take a few years for them to get it right um, but they're going to make mistakes, and that's ultimately how you get it right. And again, this is Europa League, and some shady referee from probably Italy in, in the in the in the box that hates Manchester United. So that's why we got this one. And that'll happen, sir. And uh, to put a, a dagger in this game's heart, there wasn't much doing in the last thirty minutes of the game. Casemiro had a chance in the sixty fourth. Really, a good headed effort in terms of the opportunity. Really a beautiful ball from Bruno in. Um, but he kind of bounced it into the ground and over the net. Could have been a really good chance to level up the game. 71st minute double sub. Sancho and Garnacho came on for a long and Anthony. Good to see Garnacho. Sancho didn't do nothing. Garnacho did a little bit, but didn't really have a chance to influence the game at all. And then Charlie McNeil, the academy player, striker, came on the 84th minute from Malasia. I didn't even see him get a touch, but he's a player that, you know, I'm excited that he's getting a chance. He's got a great, great record in the youth setups, or he scored 600 goals for Manchester City at the youth level. We pried him away a couple of years ago, and he's just showed continued productivity for the U23s, U21s, as that's evolved. Um, so he's a top player. 
this kind of speaks to the fact that we got no we got no depth at striker, sir. You know, like the Ronaldo didn't really offer as much as we would have liked in terms of pressing and getting him behind in this match. And the next in line is a youngster, unproven, and Charlie McNeil. Hey, he's got a lot of potential, but um, it's probably not what you want to be relying on at Manchester United. But that's just where we're at, given how our window went. But no one wants to hear me whinge about the transfer window anymore. Yeah, I, I just had to fact check it. He reportedly scored more than 600 goals across United's youth teams. So cities, cities youth teams. He, scored, he was at City for many years, and that's you know that's the rumor that they no, say in every don't. article about Charlie McNeil. They mentioned the 600 goals. Well, he's gonna break Sir Bobby Charlton's record. Then you know you well, we shall see. No, I, I love the youth. I, I I like to see Garnacho start. Same, you know. Uh, but I know Anthony needs minutes to get the fitness. That's why he kind of came in. It, it does make sense at the end of the day. Uh, stats, Saucy Dad, eight shots to R15, three on target for both. We had more of the ball, 56% to their 44%. So this comes down to mentality monsters, small team, small competition. Can we get up for it? Can we boss them at home? The answer is no uh, with this screw. So Ted Hag has his work cut out for him. You know, there's a reason why Casemiro is not starting. I think this shows you why Ten Hag is going with the 11. He does. We all trust Eric Ten Hag because he's got to figure it figured out. Ultimately, that's what that's what I, my takeaway. No, it's a good point, sir. There's like I think the biggest takeaway is that the 11 that started week in week out over that run we've had in the Premier League, they've earned it because like they're they're you know a lot of people were like how could McTominay start over Casemiro and you kind of see it. You saw it over versus Arsenal and today. Or yesterday's match against us, your dad is just like Casemiro ain't there yet. Fred probably needs more minutes because he looks crappy as hell. Um, so it's justified the 11 he's been playing. And I think we'll figure it out in Europa League, sir. They're going to make us listen to Hans and Franz through the knockout stages. You know, this shit ain't going away. Okay. I will literally tell you, looking at the table here for Europa League, Real Saucy Dad, three points, they're top of the group. Uh, the Sheriff. We just call him the sheriff. This is a this is his. I shot the sheriff, team. sir. Yeah, I shot the sheriff. FC three points. They're in second. Manchester United in third, and then Ammonia FC. <laughs> What's amazing about Ammonia FC is when you look at the table, they don't even have a badge. It's a generic. <laughs> know, know. It's a generic badge that tells you everything you need to know about Europa League. It's Ammonia FC. It's just like a generic green shield. That's it. That's it. <laughs> They're not a heavy of Europe, sir. I'm I'm Googling. Them. I know. I'm looking them up there. Who are you? FC Sheriff? AC Ammonia. Cypress, baby. Oh, they, they have a badge. I don't know. They have like a, they have a, cool a shamrock. Badge. Like a the three-leaf, famous three-leaf clover here. Of Cyprus. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Well, hey, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to... We'll dive into the history uh, on Ammonia. Uh, but yeah, they founded in 1948. Interesting. The hell, the Hellenic Association of Amateur Athletics. So, you know, we don't, uh, we might scoff at a generic badge on the on the table, but there's great history in all these European footballing sides. I do, I do nerd out about that. But sir, we got a next match. We don't know when. There's no actually. There's no post match presser, right? Because the the news of the Queen, so the, no one can talk to the press about football. Sorry, Eric Ten Hag, the Dutchman, can't be uh, can't talk about the match that just transpired. So we don't know what the manager thinks. Uh, they'll be interested. I mean, like I think this is kind of like a maybe a good one for United. They can just regroup. We need rest, right? That started the the first eleven has got to be knackered, and then to go again to Crystal Palace, especially playing Delo, Malasia, Eriksson, Bruno featured. Like people need rest, so. The Crystal Palace game is off this weekend. Uh, the The announcement came this this morning. Um, the Premier League, the statement. Sir, should we just jump into the United? Let's jump in the, the news, news, bud. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second, yeah. Right. United in the news. Uh, the Premier League. At a meeting this morning, Premier League clubs pay tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II to honor her and her extraordinary life and contribution to the nation. And a as marked of respect, this weekend's Premier League matches 
will be postponed, including Monday night's game. Richard Masters, the Premier League chief executive, said, quote, We and our clubs would like to pay tribute to Her Majesty's long and unwavering service to our country. As our longest serving monarch, she has been an inspiration and leaves behind an incredible legacy following a life of dedication. This is a tremendously sad time for the nation, but also for millions of people around the world. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Millions of people around the world who admired her, maybe who were under subject to the Commonwealth. But sir, you know, shout out to uh, the Queen, Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, you know, 96. I hope I can live to 96. Uh, but don't we're Americans. Don't count on it, sir. You know, we are the American Red Devils. We know there are listeners in the UK. So we, you know, it is a sad day for England. But make no mistake about it, baby. <laughs> we're American. And, you know, we uh, we told King George how we felt a long, long time ago. And that's why we got freedom, sir, <laughs> here. We don't have a king. So I don't know. I can't really comment on uh, what it's like to have a monarch pass away. So, but apparently you can't play sports. That's what I'm learning. Respect, 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 man, respect, respect, respect. Sir, I mean, that's the position today. You know, condolences to anyone, condolences to the queen, the family. Um, anyone passing is, you know, usually a tragic event. So hearts go out to all the English people so, um, kind of memorializing her life. You know, we're Yanks, buddy. This is the America Red Devil podcast. Like, I don't really get it, but, um, you know, I'm going to let them do what they need to do. I understand we were out there in May. We saw all the to-do and all the hubble-lub for the Jubilee. The monarch is a big deal in England. Um, for Americans, you know, it, it it's a little bit more of a, a stretch because we don't really get it. So whatever. I'm just more surprised that they're actually postponing the match. Really, we talked about it at the beginning of the pod, just because... Of the, you know, existing max match congestion because of the World Cup. Like, if you look from now until the end of May, every game week is basically double game weeks with, with the cup competition. So it's just like, this game weekend is going to be postponed. And they're saying already, most likely next weekend's game match is, are going to be postponed because of the funeral for the Queen. I Dude, there's a respect element. I get that. But it's That's like, not. couldn't you just have the, t- the players go out? With the fans, do a minute of silence, have them all sing, God bless the queen, you know, like do their whole to do and then get on with a football match because they never just sit around and just like lament and just feel bad about it. I think it's to get on with your life. You know, we you hearken to the 9-11 comparison, the only time in our lives that we've seen matches postponed unless it was like weather or power grid related. Um, hey. You got to do what you got to do. I, I, you know, this is no surprise. I knew these games are being called off as soon as we were talking about it yesterday. Yeah, I, look, to, the funeral call off makes more sense right. to me, right? If, if like, you know, because I imagine, I don't know, but I imagine that when like the, you know, the monarch dies, you know, the 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 loyal subjects, you know, all get down and you know they have to like mourn. Uh, the the passing right and there's like a big procession and i bet you it's like a big thing you know uh and i could see canceling that so the nation you know watches that like i that makes complete sense to me this weekend like you said because of the congestion i thought it'd be a better way to just like you know play and have remember her the whole weekend type of thing but sir i'm not gonna get into it you know i don't want to put off my uh like my friends on the other side of the pond you know uh, like there's, and I'm going to, I'm going to caveat too. There's mixed feelings about the monarchy in Britain. It's not only like nationalistic pride. Everybody's on that side. Like I've like, I have good buddies in England and they're, you know, not bothered. Like I think you know, our buddy with the Jubilee, he's like, I get out of town cause the nuts come to town, you know? So there, there, there's mixed feelings about it on all sides. It's not just like, uh, you know, you know, it's not all, it's not all. What they say? It's not black and white, sir. This whole it's not thing. all tea and crumpets. You know, everyone's not all all in on it either. So you know, um, but yeah, it's uh, you know, I think JFK got shot and NFL played two days later. You know, they're 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 like football goes on. Two weekends would be 
It's a little much. And then there's an international break, so it's conceivable we won't have any Premier, Premier League action until October, which is just madness. But so you, they got to do what they got to do. I get it. Seventy years, it's a long time. And if you have a monarch in the first place, well, there's certain conditions around that where it's um, kind of put ahead of everything else. So is what it is. This is part of the nature of the beast of, of supporting English teams um, as you get what comes along with England. No, and, and to be honest, like, you know, anyone listening to us about our I, thoughts on, like, the monarchy in England should just, like, you know, take everything we say out the grain of salt because yeah, uh, we're, we're, like, full American Muppets. Like, I got, like, a, I got, like a, a painting of the Boston Tea Party in my office. You know, there's a reason. You know, it's like, you know, I like throwing the tea in the harbor, like – you know, King George, we, we he, he he wasn't nice to us. King George wasn't kind. You know, that's our great 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 grandfather. So you know, we, we got beef. We're biased. That's just how we are as American Red Devils. So you know, I, I'll tell you what, England does a bunch of things right, and you know, if that's part of the monarchy, then then so be it. But football, I don't like. Tea. I'm not a big tea guy, but you know, I'll, I'll take football all day. Uh, Simon Stone says latest government guidance. He said the government said there's no obligation to cancel or postpone events, but we're seeing that across the board and we'll keep you posted. But again, crazy times here, uh, crazy times we live in. And obviously it is sad when anyone passes away. And obviously, you know, condolences to the queen and her family. Uh, Manchester United are ready to start talks with getting into football news. Moving on. Uh Manchester United are ready to start talks with Marcus Rashford over a new five-year deal at Old Trafford after his impressive start to the new campaign. And I thought this was a good segue to talk about contracts up in 2023. Marcus Rashford, new deal? Deal or no deal? That's what we're going to play here on the pod. Deal. You know, we talked about this. Of course this you guy. have to. Of course you have to give him a deal, bro. We have Who do we have in attack? This guy. You, 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 like, you'd be an idiot not to give matches? him a deal. Yeah, of course. Three matches to give a deal. We have no players, bro. Who's our strikers? We have no one. Martial can't stay fit. Uh, Ronaldo's leaving. Uh, Sancho, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Anthony, we'll see. And, you know, he's. this is not a Phil Jones. This is not like re-signing Phil Jones in 2019 like Ed Woodward did. This is 24-year-old Marcus Rashford starting to show form like we saw in glimpses over the last couple managers. Um, and this is about protecting Manchester United's assets. So he's on less money than Martial. He's on 200,000 pounds a week. He's probably going to want a bumper deal. But, hey, we, we sound a lot different than we sounded six weeks ago when the PSG rumors were swirling. There are a couple players out of contract. The low is one of them, too, sir. You got to re-up his contract as well, given how important he's been under the new manager. I think, you know, for me, Rashford's in the same camp. You got you to keep him around. He's a mank. He looks to be getting into form. He looks to be running hard. That's what we wanted to see. No, you're you're absolutely right here. Uh, I was just giving you some stick. You got to sign Marcus for the simple reason that uh, you got to lock up that value. So, you know, he's found some form. He's 24. PSG, Kid. PSG, Kid. PSG was thinking, hey, 65 million. And it's basically like locking in the option to keep him or sell him uh, and then make some money because the front office has to learn how to make money off of players, even if it doesn't work out from a Manchester United, which ultimately. Coming off the left, he looked really good. I, I think it should work out for him at Manchester United. So uh, obviously, you got to sign him. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, his contract expires, but we do have an option for, for another year. So I'm obviously going to take that option as a Manchester United Muppet. Tom Heaton's on a one year deal. So what? He's third string. De Gea, this is another one. That's contract a big expires one. Expires 2023. That's a big one. What do you do? You resign him, but you certainly don't resign him with the same amount of money. Like, holy shit, he's got to take like a half cut, and if not, you let him leave. You can't be paying him for Don't you think that week, he'll bro. leave if you do that? Don't you think he'll leave if I mean, you, you do that? And you have to let him leave because he's not good. Honestly, he's, I, I love the hair, bro, but he ain't good enough to justify that money. Like, not even close. Obviously, do Brofka's on a one year deal, too. So, like, you have all three keepers on a one year. That makes you want to sign to hay even more, right? No, it's a, a good point, but those decision. are those are like stopgap. De Bruyne, Heaton, those are yeah, stopgap players, you know. And this De Gea, is like bad this, director of football. What this director like of football? Bad. I know, but like this is like if you're a director of football, having all three keepers on a one year deal, it's not a good look because it just creates more turnover that you need to solve for next summer. 
this is just patchwork stuff. Obviously, Dubrovka's on. Was it loaned to buy? I think. Yeah. Uh, Phil Jones finally. He's See done. See ya. Uh, give him a new Trump. contract. So are they going to give him a new contract? New four year deal? No, nah, he's done. Finally. Uh, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw. Both are fullbacks, right? The low two, I think. Yeah. So, but like Luke Shaw, what do you do with Luke Shaw? Even though you probably re sign him at a reasonable rate because <sighs> no. you sell him. Are you going to let him leave don't. for free? Yes. Okay. It's over, bro. Yeah, probably. A hundred percent. This is a this is a hundred percent. Do not sign Luke Shaw. They will. You can't do it. You can't do it. You gotta. You gotta. And here's the reason why they will do it. Because the buy news, get, which I didn't mention in the, I didn't mean to cut you off, sir. The buy news, which I didn't include in, in the Manchester United in the news, which is he basically called out the club for favoring English talent, which is worth noting because that's been new news since the last game. That could probably contribute to the fact that they're more likely than not to to re-sign Luke Shaw. Uh no, I I don't think it has to do with that. I don't think the Glazers really care. But you know that's some like weird like pro English like it's probably Fletcher or something right uh, at the club. It's because to buy another left back it's going to cost you thirty million. But from a wage perspective, it costs you way less than thirty million, or like maybe closer to thirty million to sign Luke Shaw, keep him there. So it's just because. To go out and sign a player, you have to pay upfront fee plus the wages. Luke Shaw, all you have to do is pay the wages. So that's kind of why you're going to probably see him back. All you have to but do is pay is the a, wages and the meat pie bill, sir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he's a player He's a player that, like, you know who's right? Mourinho. Mourinho was right. How, he, about Luke, all of them, Luke, sir. Luke Shaw right proved him wrong for, like, what? A week. 12, 12 months, yeah, you know? Max. Like, Luke Shaw had a run of 12 months. But Mourinho called him a bluffer. And he's obviously – that's what he is. It's true. Mourinho called out a lot of players, and pretty much every player he called out turned to be right. Everything Mourinho said, someone someone absolutely killed me on that. I think pretty much everything everything he said was right, including the fact that Manchester United are not a big club in Europe. I, I, I And as, as much as that hurts to hear, it's true. No, the way he said that was wrong. I, I'm going to disagree with you on that. He was like, no, you know, no, like no. United doesn't have European no. pedigree. You could say we're a poorly Sir, run like, club, bro. It's like, come on, Sir, how many? We have European many, pedigree. We lose. We've lost a lot of finals, man. Yeah, we lost like, two finals to the best team, arguably in the last twenty five years. That Barcelona is team. Villarreal uh, one of those best teams. Eh? I'm not talking about that, bro. I'm talking about when we actually were. A That's top Europe, team. dude. We we're top That's team. That. that was after bro, he said it. Struck, that was literally dude, after he said that comment. No, I, but I'm also going to tell you that we are a club that have not achieved. What we should have in Europe. That's 100%. what I think. Yeah, he of course. Meant. Is that basically like if Manchester United won five Champions Leagues and like wasn't yo yoing between like Europa League and Champions League, like then I would agree uh, with, then I wouldn't agree with it. You know, it, we have struggled. Like Champions League for us is hard to get. And doing well in that competition has been hard. And you're right. Barcelona did get us. But, you know, Fergie didn't have as many Champions League trophies as he should have. United doesn't have as many Champions League trophies as we should. And it's a tough comment to hear. But it's like, I think it's true because we struggle for whatever. Bad luck, call it. Like the the Nani red card. You know? No, he, uh, come on, Fergie overperformed in the league. 13 in, in 27 is yeah, insane. Exactly. He yes. overperformed yes. in the league, yes. underperformed in the in the Champions League, but it's probably because he was focused on the league. And also, like, we could have picked up one of those if Glazers literally just, like, stopped investing in the club in 2008 as they sold Ronaldo. Like, they just never put any more money in, really, against unless they were, like, forced uh. to a corner. I think we would have won one more for Fergie if they were actually, like, leaning in to his end of his tenure. But, of course, they didn't. We know how they've treated this club. Um but I don't disagree. But I also like that comment was wrong. Like he, like United has pedigree, we've underperformed. But it's not like we haven't won three. We're the first English club to no, win. No, but it's like, I think that he was just. That's what he was trying to say. Is like you know. Well, he was also uh, pissed. That was like, sir. He was like complaining about how much money United was spending for good reason, right? They, they hopefully we have a track record, right? They uh, they'll they'll spend big on a new manager year one, and then they'll completely pull back the spending and like. Everything is lining up for that to happen under Eric Ten Hag. If he was lucky enough to finish in the top no, four, but it, it they're not going to spend for him next year. It, it goes to the core of who we are, and and it, it, and this is like the core of who we are is you know it's all Premier the Premier League. 
It's just like I want another. I want the Premier League trophy. That's the that's the trophy I want. That's the trophy I want. That's who we are. You know, it's not like I don't I don't want the Champions League. I want twenty one. You know, and that's just who Manchester United is. Um, because, I mean, 1968 is like huge for this club, right? Winning after Munich and 10 years on after Munich, you know, the Munich being talking about European history and we have rich European history, but it's not like we've definitely not hit our success. So I think it's like the DNA is the league domestically just dominating England. Um, and they, you know, it's just, you would, would you rather have the champions league or, or, or 21? Champions League. Really? Yeah. Because when's the last time we won the Champions League? 2008. When's the last time we won the Premier League? 2013. Yeah, but the thing is, for me, it's not like, and this is why this is kind of one in my lifetime, five leagues. So it's like, you know, uh, for me, it's harder to win. For me, it's a big sidetrack. But for me, it comes down to the fact that, like, I just don't think Manchester United is what it. Champions League just doesn't matter to me as much as like the the Premier League, right? Because you think of like who wins it, like some lucky team in a tournament. Uh, you know, like Liverpool gets Tottenham in a final, they win one. Like, you know, is that really that difficult versus going thirty eight games? Of course it is, because if you it know, wasn't, we would have won more than two during like the best manager in our club's history's tenure. Because that's how difficult it is. The club, cup, cup, cup competitions are, are in, intrinsically difficult, especially when you have a season going on. So, like, you know, no, the there's more the randomness point. to it. You know, it's of like, you know, so uh, getting back to our who's up, Fred's up. What do you do with Fred? I, you don't sign him. Yes, you, you, you don't. Do. You don't. Yes, you don't sign do. him. Yes, no, do. not a chance. Yes, you do. Why? <laughs> give me because give me because that. how much Why? you get to cost to replace him? Uh, like, yeah, you start resign him. He's twenty eight. He's, he's not. Like, you got to get rid of these wiffle waffle players, bro. bro Fred's got more use in this squad than Luke Shaw does. Like, you, you absolutely see him with that haircut out there against against the uh, Sociedad in the played, Europa bro. League. He bro, he play. looks you like resign him. If like, dude, he looks he looks he looks horrible. Well, you're not the director you know? of football. That's what I would do. You have your opinion. No, I, but here's the thing. You pay 50 million for a midfielder. He plays for you for like how many years? Four or five years. And he's inconsistent. Never hits his potential. It's like, he's got to go. You need people. You got to sign people and then have them like literally get better over time. You paid 55 million you know? pounds for him. You got to, you got to, and, he's he, not, and he doesn't get injured. You got to see what he can do under the new manager. I disagree with you. You got to research Fred. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you, he started in the midfield and then got dropped this season. He, so did, that's so, isn't that how it worked with him. He yeah, started. Ronaldo, Ronaldo and, got and he's dropped. literally like, "You're out." Like game two, like passing it to the other team in our box. Like, I how many times have you seen that from him? So it, it's just one of those things where, if you're good, why commit your future to a player who has? He's not a bad player, but he's not good enough to start in the premier league for Manchester United, why would you pay him more money? I, I, you know, it's not like he does a job and can't really unlock like the big teams. It's like, he is a liability and you don't know when it's going to come, but it's going to come. And he's inconsistent. So why would you sign him for four more? Why do you need four he's more cheaper, years? Cause it's cheaper than going to buy a new player in this market where you pay 80 fucking 5 million for uh, Anthony. With, uh, uh, right. Like 14 team leagues. Fred, you know, I'm only team Fred because what's the cost to replace him? <sighs> Uh, you just signed Casemiro. You would think there'd be something there cooking, right? Because that too. I saw good him. For... I saw him yesterday. Yeah, they both look like shit. You would think Casemiro's a dog shit player based <laughs> on how he performed yesterday. That guy's like the best CDM in the world before he came to Manchester Casemiro, United. we Casemiro's on game two. Fred's on game. Like, I'm not 200. saying that Fred is like worked out perfectly, but like if it's like, do you resign Luke Shaw or resign Fred? I think you no. resign Fred. <clears throat> I think you need. I think the problem in Manchester United has been letting the Harry Magoo's hang around. Letting the Freds hang or letting the Shaws hang around because it's like it just takes a position from like a Malasia or a young hungry player coming through. And I'd rather find like a 19 year old hungry player who's ready to come through than Fred. You know, I just want to find hungry young talent and let them come through the team. And if you sign Fred for two years while you sign someone young to come through and take his lunch. Then I'm fine with it. He won't but sign a two year contract. He's 28. Him, he wants a four year contract, bro. Don't. I'll, I know we're going to sign Shaw and Fred to long deals, and those, that's just a rough way to look at it. Delo is also another one. That one you sign. He's been inconsistent. That, uh, I, I, I could just feed you back your same line. He's been just as inconsistent as Fred. Showed form 
what, five games a season? Just to play devil's advocate, same, same argument. Like, he's been just... He's, 20, he's 23. He's had a great start to the season. Fred has not had a great start to the season. So, if, like, if Fred comes out, if you're in your renewal deal year, and Delos earned the starting right back spot, and it's playing I'm not well, arguing to not renew Delo. Then you sign him. You have no if depth Fred's, in midfield. Fred, no depth Fred's in midfield. Literally, Fred literally is started, didn't play well, out of the team, and that's the consistency we've seen. That's why I wouldn't sign him. Well, this year, he's, he's getting a new contract, so I can guarantee you that. I know. I know. <laughs> so yeah. just the same for then. He's getting get a new contract. Fred. Four years, I'll bro. You, I'll tell you, you know what? We need football back because we're getting heated about it. A Fred contact. It hasn't even happened yet. It hasn't even happened yet. Speaking of getting fired up, sir, let's talk about our favorite family from Florida. All right. You want to get into the article here? So the allegedly, and now take it with a grain of salt, because I think this is coming from the mirror of all sources. Man United owners, the Glazers, finally named price to sell club amid growing interest. We talked about this at the beginning of the pod. There is smoke continuing to circle. Um, The price sounds light. 3.75 3.75 billion pounds probably after the debt's paid off. But either way, I thought it'd be closer to five, six b- 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 billion. Um, there's mention of this of Middle Eastern buyers for the first time, at least from this side, the Dubai, Abu Dhabi. We'll see. I don't know, sir. Um, but either way, you know, I hope there's likes here less so on the buyer, more so on the seller, because I want the Glazers out first and foremost. Obviously we know how we feel. Our preferred buyers, Ratcliffe and that consortium, Um, but the fact this isn't going away is a good sign, I would think, or it's just, they're trying to feed us the headlines, but, uh, what do you make of it? Daily mail. You always hate on the daily mail here. Uh, Um, I, I, a big fan of the daily mail. So I I would just need to know what sources would need to confirm around the 3.75 billion would be enough because that just seems like Lauren Blanc said too light. light, too light. I agree, too light. It's too light. You know, I I would think they want five or six, and especially for the opening opening round. I mean, you got to be thinking like big money here. Uh, but this is good news because it's just more smoke, more smoke about Manchester United being for sale. If there's smoke about Manchester United being for sale, somebody is probably talking about it with Manchester United, so the Glazers are probably exploring options behind the scenes. Like we said, it's a public company, so there, sh- there isn't a lot going to be come out here. Uh, but the interesting part of it was Dubai interested in joining the Premier League party here. Dubai. Interesting. Hmm. <clears throat> Sir, so we'll be going out to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, in a couple of months for the World Cup. We'll get to see with our own eyes. You know, I don't know. It's more about the fact that United are actually keen to sell, if they've actually named a price, like you said, I think we're both in agreement. This price tag that is listed seems low, but if they have a price in mind, that just shows that there is an appetite to leave the club, which is what the fans all want, right? Nineteen fifty, exactly. Keep the pressure on Glazers. They need to go. We all feel the same way. Like they're negligent. They don't give a shit about the club. They don't give a shit about the fans. They want to carve up as much bacon from this hog as possible um so i don't know there's not gonna be a perfect buyer but i think most importantly like it's very unlikely they're gonna be worse whoever buys than the lasers if you look at their tenure i mean that's like almost as bad as it could have gone i mean i guess they could have come in and fired fergie that would have been worse but like pretty much uh, they bottled you know, most stuff jim ratcliffe seems like the best buyer to me he's not english enough. he's english and of Manchester United, somebody who cares about the club, somebody who understands the asset is bigger than just himself. You know, uh, selling to the latest sovereign wealth fund doesn't get me too excited. I'm not like too excited about that. Um, but again, I I don't I'm not aware of the human rights violations if there are any uh, from the sovereign wealth fund of Dubai. It's hard to keep track of all these things these days. Um, Manchester United's share price was up on rumors about the takeover. Um, which is interesting. You're starting to see a climb again. It, the stock has been in the absolute dumpster all year, but it's starting to climb, and people think that it's due to the sale. This is something you will start seeing. You'll see out-of-the-money calls being bought. You'll see the stock kind of moving. That is all smoke that you might be seeing here, but again, it's going to take a long time. And look, any way you look at it, the Glazer selling is an L for them. 
I mean, it's obviously a big win on the financial side, but the optics will be people dancing in the streets. So <laughs> it's not that. I, it's like they're gonna do uh, from a financial standpoint. Their deal is like, sorry, they put in like two hundred million. They'll walk away with five billion. Like they're gonna have a great fucking deal, especially with the dividend that they also took out. Like their IRR. No, I know. It's huge. Kind of, like huge. I feel like they're kind of like they're kind of like spiteful owners where they, they are, like, don't want to give, they, they don't want to like, like their us, view bro. would they be like, us. I don't want to, I don't want to let the fans like celebrate. No, the cause they will, they, know, they like, will celebrate like the street, like bro. Like we got, uh, like they got, they'll take the five bill and they'll still be begrudgingly like letting us like have a new owner. That's a hundred percent. Right. <laughs> cause they don't want to see everyone like so happy that they're gone, 100%. you know, cause they, cause it kind of is admitting that they sucked in some way. But, uh, so, uh, sir, ice cold, baby. I guess ice cold. Sir, they are. They're like they're digging in, bro. Like I tell you what, they go. We'll be celebrating like the Death Star got blown up. All right. Uh oh. <laughs> New one here. Uh-oh. Like, please give me a break here. Going to the World Cup. Saudi Arabia set to announce joint bid along with Egypt and Greece to host twenty twenty three World Cup. Please no. <laughs> that sounds like a doozy. I do not want any more. I like. I haven't even gone to Qatar, but I don't want any more Middle Eastern World Cups for like another thirty years. It's like you got to go to, got to go to different continents, right? What about Asia? Yeah, I, that's the way the World Cup should go. It should be like, yeah. you have it in the Middle East, okay. and you have it in North America, South America. And you have it in Europe. It hasn't been it hasn't been in Europe in a while. You go to Europe. Africa's right. do well. I guess they had South then Africa. Then you go to Asia. Right. Then you go to Asia. Then you go to Africa. It should always be moving around the yeah. world in some sort of like non-corruption based <laughs> pattern. It's very corrupt. It's very and I'm going to count sorry. Russia as Asia, right? Is, is it, or you know, Russia is Europe technically, but they're know, both. I don't right. want it to go back. I want it to go to like. How about go to like England, Ireland, Scotland? Something that would be really fun to go to. Like people need. Like, obviously, America, Mexico, Canada will be awesome. It will be. But it should be the same. It shouldn't always be, like, go to, like, a small, rich nation in the middle of nowhere because they bribed FIFA officials. And, you know, I just... Also, it would be a winner again, right? It would be another winner World Cup, which is not good for anybody, sir. This season's going to be, a you know, the Queen yeah, passing, no, the, I, those yeah. matches. You have the World Cup starts in two months. Or at least the players leave for camp in two well, months. Especially with like COVID, so we've already had this like two years of like crazy fixture congestion because of like getting through COVID, and then we have the World Winter World Cup. It's like oh yeah yeah you know I, I, the oh, World yeah, Cup oh yeah yeah indeed oh yeah, well, yeah, oh, yeah it's yeah, true yeah, bro oh yeah yeah it was like, it's hot it's <laughs> hot in Saudi Arabia sir year round. Well, you know, I think the problem, you know just from my perspective it's just the problem is the world cup should be an invitation for everyone in the world to come and you're already feeling with qatar which is like everyone from the world's coming and then they're like not really pumped about you know a lot of things that that means like whether you know drinking or you know like lgbtq and stuff like that so it's like it's kind of hard if you're if you're not a very well you know if there's, there's certain issues that you're very staunch on and then the world wants to come the world cup should be an accepting event where everyone can come and i just feel like saudi arabia would probably be less welcoming than qatar to that end <laughs> yeah they have a track record sir like you said i think the yeah rotate you know, the continent i think that's a great i mean they're not going to do it because it's literally all about play, money like they don't like football is not part of the history of the middle east either that's what's also very interesting you know it's not like qatar never really had we had an interest in football, right? It's just like, I have an interest in like getting on the world stage, which is like kind of that sports washing element, which is totally a different motivation than like, Hey, they've been playing football in England. They invented it. Let's bring the world cup back there, you know, or I, I just, stadiums me, are built. There's thing. also the convenience factor. It's like, they have the infrastructure. Yes. That's important. You don't have to fuck with the season timing. That's important. Um, they have they the have stadiums, hotels, bro. They have the public transit. They have right, the they stadiums. Have they have, you know, like imagine going to a World Cup game at Wembley. You know, or that'd be insane. Like, it's just, you know, it's also easy. It's like it'll be easy, easier than going to the game in the U.S. Right? Because the infrastructure in Western Europe is, unfortunately, you know, especially the mass transit is better. It just is. So, like, getting to different games around even just England is just so easy because you take trains everywhere. 
they're building trains in Doha at the moment, sir. And the same thing will be going with Saudi Arabia. It's like, I think you just make no, it a little be, bit less of a gonna leap. Be like, it's going to be like fire fest getting around there. hundred percent. Ready. Uh, ready. Uh, but they say Egypt and Greece as well. Right. So you can, if you don't want to go to Saudi Arabia, you can just go to Greece. I, but it's like a joint bid. It seems like. Well, cobble know. together, sir. I think Greece is also known for their fantastic infrastructure. This is true, but Greece, yeah, Greece in the winter, Greece Correct. in the summer would be, awesome. you know, it's like, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, let's hope someone else comes up with a better bid, but, you know, we're big fans of the World Cup and obviously 2030 isn't settled, but how about like, you know, Italy for the World Cup, like Italy hosting a World Cup, That would be, how insane would that be? That'd be so not, that'd be so awesome. Like a country like that. Italy, I don't know. Thailand, Vietnam, like somewhere like mix it up. You know, mix it. I think Asia's due for one. Yeah. Yeah. Asia's due. Asia's due. Totally. Yeah. You, you're, like you said, I think Europe is due again. Like it's been a minute since we did one in Europe. Well, people are going to argue Russia. But like it splits, right? Russia's so huge that like technically the western end I agree. is on the eastern I, edge I, of I, Europe. I, and then obviously I, the tail I, end I, is I, on I in, in Asia. You. It's that's one that I'm sure like there's much lack of consensus about where does Russia fit on what side. Uh, all right, sir. If you had to pick one country to host a World Cup in the world, which one would it be that you want to go to? It can't be the United States because obviously we're biased, but like what one country? I, I, you know, I'm excited. Don't tell my wife about the Euros. I think that is a great fit. Like, because just, dude, England's got to go. I mean, Germany would also do a good job. Spain would do a good job. France would do fine job. Same with Italy, but like, I like the whole idea of doing like an England Ireland combined yeah. bid. I know they're doing about the Euros, like we mentioned, but like they have the infrastructure, they have the stadiums, they have the cult. I mean, they love football. They're so nuts about football. Um, and dude, they like to get after it. So they like dark ales. They like sitting out in the sun and getting pink red. Um, and they like cheering on their team, cheering on, you know, the three lions or so like that would be fun as shit. Same with the Irish fans getting their bid. Cause they offer a different element than the English um that would be a laugh like i'd love to go to dublin and like watch football so what, what about you sir uh i gotta go i gotta go back to brazil i mean you yeah, get the brazil <laughs> yeah you oh, i didn't brazil. count <laughs> brazil was so good uh, you, you get beaches like i just think that like the beach element and then the world cup is like you can't beat it. you really you're like playing fo- you're playing football on the beach you're going to games. It's like salt and meat s- summer. It's like, aw- it's unbelievable. It's like, I'm like, I like the beach element. So if we want to host the world cup in Hawaii, I'm also good. Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. That's going to be a challenge. You, you can see where I'm going. All right. Uh, let's get into fan questions here. Uh, at J E R underscore young 93 midfield played mediocre at best or offense forces the ball to the wings way too much, especially when Erickson is off the pitch recipe for a deadbeat offense. We need to play more in the middle. And when Fred plays a full 90 minutes, good luck with that. We talked about Fred. We talked about ad nauseum. So that midfield, nothing was doing through it. Hey, um, other than Erickson. You sign Ber- Sir, I'm not, <laughs> you resign him because how much does it cost to replace him? And how, <laughs> how much depth do we have in midfield? Like none. I love it. None. Keep arguing uh, he, uh, at Brian D. Burbrink. Quote, different team without Erickson Delo. Fred was atrocious. Casemiro, not game fit. Sharp Ronaldo scores a brace. Didn't deserve to win. But that penalty was bonkers. Again, sir, you want to sign Fred? So that's great feedback, though, in general. That's right. It's like we like CR7 should have had two. Bad penalty call. Never got going. It's not doom and gloom. It's only going to be doom and gloom because <laughs> there's no football in the near future. So you're just you're always harking back to the last game. The last game was a stinker. So that's going to make the next couple of weeks especially fun. Uh, of course, Hans and Franz has to kick off again with the bad penalty memories. Fred was miserable. Ronaldo cooked. Casemiro looking off the pace. Lots of positive vibes over the past two weeks. This is a reminder that this squad is still bloated with dead weight and uninspiring vets. What a take at Watts ND. And I think he's talking about uninspiring vets, you know. Your That's boy, true. your boy Fred. Red the red. Sir, I, 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 the fans are saying it, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll find out Jamal, this season. At Jamal Mota, sir, it's felt like throwback vibes to last year. Not good enough overall. We should be able to win that with our B team, but not that worried either. Terrible VAR call. Martin is still looking good. 
Yeah, I mean, it's uh, and we had a reply to that uh, at uh, Alberto Lopez. Bad call or not, Real Sociedad was the better team. They knew how to sit tactically, and they used their wingman, particularly Kubu, for the few attacks they had and kept Manchester United under wraps. I think it's true. Uh, we looked disjointed, disorganized, and that's what you expect from the B team that hasn't had a lot of playing time, other than Fred, who started the season and then just got the bench because he was not playing well. Keep going, he comes bro. in, has keep a going, stinker. Keep going, bro. And then Alex wants to sign Keep him. going, bro. Long balls. <laughs> keep going, it's bro. Early. It's, With it's his early. eyes, it's like 7 o'clock in California. It's, it's guy, early. He's going, Fred, and Fred, Fred. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Fred, I'll get this guy a Fred shirt, bro. Uh, don't, bro. Yeah, nail in the coffin. Don't give me any shirt, sir. Don't give me get, any shirt. Get this guy a Fred shirt. Give me a Roy Keane shirt, coffin. extra large. Oh, my God. Let's go. Uh, that is it, sir. That is the podcast. Thank you for everyone listening to our early morning ramblings here. Uh, Pod never sleeps. We try to do everything we can to get all the podcasts out. We don't know when Manchester United is playing again. These weekends might be off, but we're playing Europa League for sure, right? Yeah, you would think. Europa League isn't – that's European, right? So the, We'll I'm keep sure the pod posted. So they're, they're supposed to be yeah. a game next week on Thursday. That looks to be going ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll drop a preview of that probably over the coming days. So, um, yeah, sure. it's all yeah. happening in real time. Yeah, exactly. We'll keep everyone posted here. Thanks for listening. You guys are the real MVPs. Uh, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash America Devils. If you're on the fence, we're trying to get to 100 Patreon supporters for this small time shop. Please check it out. Uh, check out our website, americadevils.com. Click on store. Great merch, great blog content there. Write a review, like, subscribe. It all goes a long way because, again, it's just me and Alex. Nothing to it. Uh, sorry, you got our top 10 downloads last seven days? So you know it. Number one, how you doing? How you doing? Salem, Connecticut. Bellingham, Washington, Ashburn, Virginia, Bangkok, Thailand. So that would be a great host city for the World Cup. Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, Normal, Illinois, London, King, uh, London, United Kingdom, San Pedro de Marqua, uh, Dominican Republic, Acala, Florida, and last but not least, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Appreciate all the American Devils listening week in, week out. We could not do it without you, sirs. Um, and hey, no football yet. Could be Europa League as our next match. Can't wait for that, sir. The boys are going to Yeah, more rest. Europa League. That's yeah, what so we want. Hot the frauds yeah. on repeat. Speaking of which, speaking of you which, got a song? we got into it. We got into it um, a little bit earlier. We have won it all. We have seen a lot. Let's, uh, let's, go. let's close it out with that, sir. Have a good week. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. I say I'm